Hello, this is Reverend Naoya of the Los Angeles Gedats Church. Do you know Mary Kondo? One year ago, when a church member asked me that, I had never heard of her. For those of you who are not familiar with her, Mary Kondo is a Japanese woman who is an organizing consultant, author, and a TV show host. She became famous for her book, this book, The Life-Changing Magic of Tearing Up, which introduced her KonMari method of home organizing. Her book has been translated in more than 40 countries and has sold millions of copies in the U.S. since it was published in 2014. In 2015, Mary Kondo was listed as one of Time's 100 most influential people. Maybe you saw her and her KonMari organizing method on the recent Netflix series, Teeling Up with Mary Kondo. She has millions of American fans and is now more famous here than in Japan. Anyway, the reason I mention, I mention Mary Kondo is that I find some interesting parallels between her KonMari methods and our Gedatsu study. Both are influenced by Japanese culture and especially Shinto, the native religion of Japan. In the Netflix series, whenever Mary visits a client's home, the first thing she does is sit seiza style on the floor with the client. This is to properly greet and show appreciation to the house. While it must be very uncomfortable for Americans to sit that way, I find it's a clever introduction to Japanese culture. Now let's look at some of the unique KonMari organizing methods. Mary says, when it comes to storage, vertical is best. That's because stacking is very hard on the things at the bottom. And they virtually disappear because we forget that they even exist. Things stored vertically are easier to find and grab. This applies not only to crawls, but everything, even laptops. Maria in instructs us to unpack and detach new crawls immediately. She explains, in order for your crawls to make the transition from store products to personal possessions, you need to perform the ritual of cutting the umbilical cord that links them to the shop. In other words, take care of what you buy as if it were your child. Appreciate your belongings and even express words of thanks. Maria encourages us to say, for example, thank you for keeping me warm all day when you hung up your clothes after returning home. Or when removing your accessories, say, thank you for making me beautiful. Express your appreciation to every item that supported you during the day. Lastly, Mary instructs, put your house in order from the perspective of what would make it happy. For example, when you TD up clothes, ask yourself, how can I make these clothes happy? This is the attitude behind the KonMari process. If you are interested in learning more about Mary Kondo, please watch her on YouTube, the internet, Netflix, or read this her book. As I said earlier, the KonMari method contains elements of Shintoism. 
When Maria talks about showing appreciation to the home, respecting things, and conversing with clothes, she does so to convey that everything is living, and their existence is important. This is in line with the Shinto belief that everything contains a spirit God and that things like wood, rocks, and wind are alive. Mary wrote in her book that she had worked as a Shinto shrine maiden for about five years. Her unique Komari methods may come from that experience. Shintoism recognizes the existence of millions of gods and the god resides within every, th every single thing in the world. This is different from the concept of a supreme god. In Christianity, Genesis in the Bible states that God as creator exists from the beginning and the world begins when God created everything. Shintoism is Japan's Genesis story. It teaches that this world, the earth, and the country of Japan were born from a female god and a male god. Stone, wind, land, plants, animals, human, and all things were originally born from these two gods. In other words, everything is related as brothers and sisters to each other. In Shintoism, there is no founder, no doctrine, no religious scripture, just respect and worship of nature. The eternal theme is mutual existence and the prosperity of nature and people. Because everything contains a God, we as humans also have a God within us. Also, the family tree of all humanity can be traced back to a single female God and a male God. I believe that Mary Kondo's unique process taps into this Shinto belief system in which everything is brothers and sisters, and the God resides in each single thing. Oh, I forgot to mention one of the most important points of the KonMari methods. It is a con concept of a spark joy. Mary explained it this way. The best way to choose what to keep and what to throw away is to take each item in one's hand and ask, does this spark joy? If it does, keep it. If not, dispose of it. Keep only those things that speak to your heart and that seems happy to be with you. In other words, respond with your heart, not your head. Follow your inspiration. I think Mary cherishes such ideas. She in instructs, Ask yourself whether it sparks joy and decide on this basis whether or not to keep it. By repeating this process hundreds and thousands of times, we naturally hone our decision-making skills. As a result, Mary says, your life will dramatically change. In Shintoism, every single Oh, everything is accepted as God's will. Gedat teaches us to align our speech, attitude, and the way of thinking with God. So when you have to decide something, whether big or small, stop and think. How I can align to God's will? Will my decision bring happiness to others? By making your decision in this manner, over and over every time, eventually you will learn naturally to make right decisions in your daily life. And like Mary said, I believe your life 
will dramatically change. In Gedatsu, we follow the Shinto belief that a God resides in each of us, so we are all brothers and sisters in this world. And following Mary Kondo's philosophy, we also believe that all things, our clothes, windows, and buildings, contain gods and are therefore our relatives as well. Once we understand this, I believe the world peace where every single person, nature, and thing is truly happy, where all people are equally respected and deserving of happiness, and where there is no brutal destruction of things and nature will be accomplished. I sincerely wish for a world where the spark of joy is alive in everyone. Thank you for your time.